Okay, hi class. Um, welcome back. I'm here in at UC San Diego at the Scripps Institute for Oceanography. Um, there's the Pacific Ocean over there somewhere. Um, and I'm here for a, a UC-wide carbon neutrality summit. Uh, that's why I wasn't able to be at my office hours yesterday. I apologize for that. Um, and I just wanted to introduce you to Wendell Brase, who is the Administrative Vice Chancellor for UCI, and uh, wanted to give him a chance to say a few words. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I thought I'd mention that um, uh, a lot of people wonder how UC Irvine has managed to cut its energy use per square foot in half. Um, <laughs> it is a fact that in 20 years now, we've doubled the size of the campus, and we're using exactly the same energy we were in, in, in 1994. And uh, the way that works is uh, mostly through uh, lighting systems and heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems, uh, which used to function uh, on worst case conditions. So en engineers used to design uh, the uh, uh, amount of ventilation in a space uh, based upon how many people it might maximally have in a room, whether it was full or not, okay. whether it was partially occupied or not, sometimes whether it was day or night. And uh, now the, the whole point of uh, smart buildings is to deliver just the right amount of energy needed at just the right time. And that, that's a totally different paradigm. Yeah, yeah. And But the way we do it is with data and sensors. And so uh, it, it sounds like engineers in the past were really stupid. That's not quite the case. No, it, it is. They did not have available the kinds of sensors that we right. now have. And, and when I say sensors, see in our laboratories at UC Irvine now, uh, we're sensing um, on a real time basis particulates volatile organic compounds, um, and of course temperature, humidity uh, as well. Uh, and what that means is we only increase air changes in laboratories when the real measured conditions warrant having an air change rate that's uh, uh, high. And then we flush out if, if there are contaminants in the lab uh, okay. quickly. We'll, we'll, we'll send the air changes up really high. That's a smart building. That's exactly what we're talking about. Just enough energy at just the right time. Uh, the one problem we have, we have a couple of problems, one, one pro and they're both about data. One of the problems we have is that uh, uh, we have now 130,000 sensors on campus wow. measuring uh, all of these things I just mentioned, uh, including loads down to the circuit level. Uh, so some of it's electrical load information. And, and, and not just loads, but uh, all the other parameters that electrical engineers use to judge the quality of power as well. Uh, those are measured along with all these other things I said about labs, uh, VOCs, and, and uh, particulates, and so on. Every five minutes, 130,000 wow. data points. Yeah. So we have billions of data points now. And I, I, uh, my engineers in uh, facilities management are actually working uh, with some of your uh, colleagues, I believe. Okay. Yeah, to uh, do uh, data analysis to mine the, the problematic spaces because one of the reasons to have all this data is to keep smart buildings smart. If we don't keep a smart building smart, it might not be any better than the buildings I was right, criticizing sure. that were built uh, 20 and 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So the other, the other digital problem we have is that uh, uh, we're, we're approaching uh, the kinds of tradespeople who are, are necessary on a smart campus in a little bit different way than the DOE. The DOE has a good program of training specialists. So if you go online, you can see a whole list of courses from the Department of Energy mm -hmm. uh, on energy managers, building managers, people like that. We think it needs to be more mainstream to the trades. So okay. for example, uh, an, uh, an electrician isn't, isn't the same as an electrician used to be. Right. Every, every device we're putting in on campus um, is, has a digital interface to a control system. Mm. And uh, so they don't need to be able to write the code, but they need to understand the protocols of how you operate right, in, sure. a, you know, in a, what I call the digital interface. Even a locksmith, when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they don't carve keys Right, now on, it's just white card, right, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, it's all uh, electronic. Yeah. And um, even a gas meter has an IP address. Yeah, yeah. Natural, you know, a gas meter. Right. So, so we're working with Irvine Valley College. We have a, uh, a, a project going where we're doing peer review on the curriculum they're developing. We'll provide the, the site for on-hands uh, uh, training for tradespeople, electricians, okay. uh, HVAC technicians, uh, uh, locksmiths, and so on. And uh, 
Um, they're good at developing curricula like that. We have a workforce that needs to be educated, both at the entry level and at mid-career levels. Okay. And, and uh, it's going to be quite a program, I think. It, it may have national ramifications because it is so different than what the DOE is doing. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of taking notice. Well, neat. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to our class. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, see you, everybody. Uh, we have to go inside to uh, uh, Governor Brown is talking in a second. All right, have a good day. Bye.